Hi, everyone. Welcome to KQ. Mitch Hightower here. It's Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. I hope that this show finds you where you are doing well and having a great day and that your new year is off to a good start. So we're coming to you today from our house in San Francisco, California, like we do every Tuesday at noon Pacific time. And today in San Francisco, it's cloudy and overcast and it's about 55 degrees, so it's a little bit chilly, but it's not really bad if you need to, you know, take a quick walk down to the grocery store. So other than that, we're doing pretty well here. I hope this show finds all of you guys doing well, too. And it's great to see that the chat was already lively before we were even actually live. So how cool is that? So welcome, everyone. I never trust a skinny chef. Shane is here. We haven't seen Shane for a while. Great to see you. I hope your new year is off to a great start, Shane. Thank you for joining us today. And Mr. Homeowner is here. Hi, Rob. It's always a pleasure to see you. He had a really fun live stream the other night that I was chatting in the chat room with, and that was super cool. And Tom's Food Factory is here. Hooray. Great to see you, Tom. Thank you for joining us. And Sunset's here. Hi, Sunset. Great to see you all the way from the East Coast. Welcome. I hope you're having a great day. We're Whatever you're up to, thanks for joining us today. And Terry's here. Hi, Terry. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. And Julie is also here. Hey, Julie. Great to see you, too. We have some of our favorite people here this afternoon to get us started. And Madwood Barbecue has just joined the chat. Hey, Madwood Barbecue. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. So what we're going to get up to today. Oh, I see Jerry Ellen's here, too, before I tell you that. Jerry Ellen's here from Nick. Cooking with Neighbors, Jerry Allen channel. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to see you here. And uh, let's see, I think, yeah. Oh, it's 20. Okay, so I don't have any business complaining because Tom says it's 28 degrees where he is. So yeah, that's definitely cold. I mean, we whine about the fog in San Francisco all the time, but yet we've still lived here for 40 years. So go figure. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna get up to today is I'm gonna show you this new Griddler that we got from Cuisinart. And <clears throat> then I'm going to show you what we're going to make in it. And today we're going to be making uh, hash browns in the griddler. We're going to be using the waffle iron plates. I'll tell you every detail about that. And we have been practicing with this unit since we got it over the weekend. And we made waffles. We've already tried hash browns. And this seems to be working very well for us. Now, some of you probably already know that we're big fans, excuse me for reaching across the table, of this cute little unit. This is a dash individual waffle maker and this works really really well and they only cost between 10 and 15 dollars depending on what color you get so i really like using this we started using this to make chaffles we've also done hash browns like we're going to do today in this the problem with this little dash is if you want to make more than one of something it takes a really long time <laughs> to make a whole bunch of things because you can only do one at a time. And the other downside, um, if I had to register a complaint, is that these plates inside of the dash are not removable. And this unit cannot be put in water. So we're always using paper towels and Q-tips to try to clean this thing out because you can't get it wet. So the cleanup is a little bit of a pain in the neck if I was being really truthful. <laughs> but otherwise, this makes really great waffles. Now, in between buying the Cuisinart Griddler and having this around, we bought another small waffle iron that was in the $40 to $50 price range, and it did not work at all. It said it got as hot as $375. When we practiced with it, it barely got up to 200 degrees. The waffles were blonde as all get out. They didn't really rise, so they were dense and kind of tough. And the cooking was really super uneven. So we had to send that little one back and we went for a more expensive unit, which is this Cuisinart Griddler. Now, this one costs about $120. Uh, that included the waffle plates, which is a separate purchase. So let me show you what you get. When you buy this unit, this is what the box looks like. Cuisinart Griddler. Uh, this one, we purchased this on Amazon. So if you wanna check this out, I put links in the description below where you're watching this live stream. So you can click on the link and go right to Amazon where we made this purchase. And if you wanna get one for yourself, you'll help us out because we get an itty bitty commission if we sell one. So if you wanna try this out, please consider ordering it from our Amazon link, which is right below. So this unit is really cool. It comes with a set of plates. And let me show you what those look like. 
These are the plates that it actually comes with. And it has a grill on one side and then a griddle on the other side. So you can just flip these over and use it as a grill or a griddle, or you can actually flip the whole lid of this unit open and use the whole thing flat. So you can have half of it be a griddle and half of it be a grill or uh, all grill, you know, so you can make paninis, you can do all kinds of fun stuff in this unit. So these are the plates that come with it, both for grilling and for griddling. Now we bought an accessory to go with ours because I really wanted to be able to use this unit to make waffles. And the good news is you can because they have an accessory, which are the griddler waffle plates. And these plates fit perfectly in the griddler because they're made by Cuisinart specifically for this unit. So that was really super easy to make happen. So we ordered the griddler and the waffle iron griddle plates at the same time. And I'll show you how to install these griddle plates as this broadcast unfolds. So let me check in with the chat for a minute. I see flour, eggs, and yeast has joined us. Hey, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. If you're not familiar with the flour, eggs, and yeast channel, I would encourage you to consider, go check out what they're up to when this live stream's over. They have a lot of fun stuff going on over there their channel and we've really enjoyed watching their videos and seeing what kind of recipes they get up to making so thanks so much for joining us today and i see dolores is here baking diva always a pleasure to have the baking diva in our company we're not worthy we're not worthy she's royalty in my book love you dolores i hope everything's going good for you there and your new year's off to a great start and gary's here from gary's Diecast collection hi gary happy new year we hope everything's going well where you are so for those of you who came late, we're gonna use the Cuisinart Griddler today, and I'm going to outfit it with waffle plates. These waffle plates, like I just said, was, was an additional purchase. They don't come with the Griddler. We bought these separately. Uh, the Griddler itself comes with a griddle plate that flips over to a grill plate. So these are actually really super easy to install. Let me show you how. So. These, there's some little tabs up here at the front and they're gonna fit right under these little catches here. And then there's buttons on the side that make these little gizmos expand and contract. And that's how you get the plates to stay in place. So I'm gonna push this button in and I'm gonna just slip the tabs underneath and then we'll let the button out and then voila, our plate's in place. Super easy, right? So let's get the top plate in place. So just so you know, today we're going to be doing uh, hash browns in the waffle iron. And in addition to that, we're also going to make a cocktail because, you know, we love day drinking around here. And I'll show you how to make a white Russian and I'll also show you how to make a black Russian. Some classic cocktails from the 1960s. We've got our Kahlua right down here. So we'll do this later once we get a waffle going. And while we're waiting for the waffle to finish, then I'll make a cocktail. So let me make sure I said hi to everyone. Dog Father's here. Hey, Alton. Always a pleasure to have Alton here from the Dog Father's Barbecue. And Michelle's here from Michelle's Cozy Home. Woohoo! Yay, great to see you today, Michelle. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Michelle just posted some really nice pictures of these lovely projects that she's just finished in her most recent video. And those, those projects were super cool. She does really lovely work. And we just really enjoy watching Michelle's channel. So thank you so much for joining us today, Michelle. We really appreciate it. How you doing? Okay. Philip has just come up into the kitchen, so he's going to come and hang out with us. So let me put this baby down. There we go. Okay. So Hello, I just Ryan. so I just got the um, our new waffle plates yeah. put in, and we talked about we're going to make a drink once we get a waffle yeah. in the waffle iron. So we're going to have to be careful because this unit gets very, very hot. And because we're in a tight space right here, we can't really push the waffle iron any further away or you won't be able to see it. So I want to make sure that you're yeah. super careful while we're sitting here with this hot thing in front of us. So anyway, let's see. Uh, we have a lot of our lovely friends in the chat this morning. And Dolores from uh, Baking Diva is saying hi. Oh, and Jeff has just joined us from Wine and Dine with Jeff channel. Great to see you. And Simple Recipes Kitchen is here. Hey, Simple Recipes Kitchen, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. So what we've got going on is I've just outfitted our new 
Cuisinart Griddler with the waffle plates that are an extra purchase. The waffle plates themselves were about $40 and the unit was about $80. So we spent $120 to get this whole setup. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this lid and we're gonna start warming up the Griddler. So right here on the front, I'm gonna turn this before it gets hot so you can see it. Right here on the front, there's a selector button. And when you use the waffle plates, you wanna select uh, griddle. And if you are using the grill plates or you wanna make paninis, then you wanna switch over to the grill side. And once we do that, I wanna turn this back once we turn it on. Uh, and then we wanna set the griddle temperature to 400 degrees. Actually, 400 is what you want to do to make a waffle. We're going to go up to 425. That's the highest setting because we want to get a nice, crispy exterior on these hash browns. So having the surface as hot as possible will help us achieve that. So I've got the griddler turned up to 425. Let's make sure everyone can still see it. There, that should do. I want to make sure that you guys can see us while we're using this. So we've got the temperature turned up to 425, which is as high as this unit goes. And then we're going to turn the selector dial over to griddle. And a red light comes on on the front of the power knob to let you know that the power is on and the unit actually is heating. Once the unit is up to temperature, the temperature dial will have a green light that will come on and that'll indicate that the unit is up to temperature and ready for you to start using it. So that's how this little unit works. We often talk about how we don't have any room for extra gizmos, but those of you who watched our uh, new refrigerator video over the holidays may have noticed that we had all this extra space from, we had a much larger refrigerator that was a lot taller uh, before and now our refrigerator is a lot shorter so we actually have several cubic feet of space above the refrigerator now where we're having a new cabinet installed and so we'll have lots of room up there to stash stuff and this may or may not wind up in that space we may take things from other places and put them up high and put this somewhere where it's more accessible because i expect to be using this a lot so one of the things i noticed when we were using this over the weekend is that this part of the handle here, this metal part of the handle does get hot. So when you touch this, you only want to touch it by this uh, plastic part of the handle here because the rest of this gets very, very hot. So I'm going to stop touching it now because this unit is already stop underway. Touching. So we want to use this. We're going to use this to lift the lid up and down once we get ready to put our hash brown mixture in the griddler. So let's see. Um, Everyone is playing nicely, so thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys being here this afternoon so we can show you what we're gonna get up to with this recipe. So one thing that uh, I've already done is I've already prepared the frozen hash browns and they're here in this mixing bowl. And the type of frozen hash browns that we're using are these frozen hash browns that come in a plastic bag. They're available in the freezer section wherever you find all kinds of other goodies. And this particular uh, brand is a Safeway Select. It's the store brand and they're calling it country style. I have absolutely no idea <laughs> what country style means because these don't look any different than the ones that aren't called country they're style. Hash browns. They're hash browns, okay? I mean, it's not really rocket science. So let me show you these hash browns. Now these have already had some preparation done to them. And let me tell you what I did before we went live today. These were thawed completely, and then we wrapped them in a clean dish towel like this. Okay, this is that one of those kind of, I think my grandmother used to call these tea towels. They're used for like drying glasses and dishes and buffing barware. They're soft but They're, strong. Exactly. So we, what we did was we just spread this out. We put the thawed out hash browns in here in a big bowl. And then we rolled this up and then I twisted it and twisted it and twisted it. And I squeezed out as much water as I could get out. You'd be surprised how much water that was. Yeah, it was a lot, wasn't it? It was way more than we thought it was going to be the first time we tried it. So you just keep squeezing this and squeezing this until you can get out as much water as possible. And if these are properly thought out, actually quite a bit of water will come out and it's not hard to get it to release. If you're having trouble getting the water to come out of the hash browns, it's probably because they're not thawed out enough yet. So we left these sitting out. I set these out this morning at 7.30 and by 10.30, they were ready to be wrung out and we 
uh, got lots and lots of water out of this. That's really important to getting a crispy product because if you just put thawed out frozen hash browns in here, you're going to wind up with a lot of extra liquid and a really soggy so result. So basically just be steamed, not, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that's how we got to where we are right now. Now, the rest of this, we've already got some other ingredients ready. So let me go over the list of ingredients with you right now when we get started. Real quick, I want to say hi to Sonia. Mrs. is Sonia Elaine. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. So we're getting ready to put together the hash brown mixture. And like I said, these have already been thawed and we squeezed out all the water uh, using a dish towel. And our other ingredients are going to be some finely diced red onion. You can use a yellow onion or a white onion. You could even use scallions. Mm, yeah, so we're gonna use a red onion today, but you can use whatever kind of onion that you like. We we'll also have some melted butter. And just so you know, all of the ingredients and the ratios are in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can copy and paste these ingredients into your digital recipe book if you like. So we've got the butter already melted. And we're also going to be using some Uncle Steve shake because no recipe in this house is complete without that product. So just so you know, we're using Gator. Gator shake. Okay, so let me show you this up close. Gator this for is, Cater. This is Gator shake from Uncle Steve shake. And we just love, I know some, a lot of you who've watched our products know that we're super big fans of Uncle Steve shake. We think these products are great and they taste really good. And like you said, Gator for Cater. There we go. Okay, so Uncle Steve shake. And we're also going to have some grated cheese. Today, we've decided to use pepper jack cheese, but you can use almost any kind of easily melted cheese you want. So it could be cheddar, Monterey Jack, Colby, what's the same thing? Asiago, <laughs> provolone, Parmesan, mozzarella. Mozzarella. How about that Gouda that you use? Oh, I love Gouda. So, you know, any kind of cheese you want. We're just using pepper jack because we happen to like that. And, and it was available. And it was In available. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is two strips of really crispy bacon that we chopped really finely. Okay, so we've got, we had two strips of very crispy bacon and just used the chef knife to chop it up and we just kept chopping and chopping and chopping until we get nice little bits like this. So I can feel this unit is already getting quite warm. Mm -hmm. You can definitely yeah. tell. This, this unit has been heating up quite quickly for us in our practice runs. So I also have some olive oil. I'll tell you what that's for in a moment. So what we need to do next is put all of these ingredients together. Did I run down everything? Oh, I forgot to mention the egg. Yay. There's one egg that we cracked in here and I beat it with the whisk until it got kind of foamy around the edges, you know, some little bubbles. You wanna make sure that it's really, really, really well beaten before you add it to the rest of the mixture. So Smoking Bears has just joined us in the chat room. Hi, Smoking Bears. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. If you guys haven't already clicked the like button, it would really help us if you would consider doing that. If you're enjoying what you're watching this afternoon, we certainly would appreciate that. And if you're not already a subscriber, you could click the red subscribe button. And if you also click the bell symbol, then every time we do a live stream or have a new video, you'll get a notice on your phone a little while before the live stream starts. Just so you know, though, we're doing live streams regularly every Tuesday at noon Pacific time. That would be 3 p.m. for those of you on the East Coast of the United States. And we're going to keep doing Tuesdays. We've been doing this for about four months now every Tuesday. We're going to keep doing Tuesdays, and then we'll also have a pre-recorded video on Friday. And then occasionally we're going to have other live streams at different times of the day, such as in the evening for special occasions. We're gonna have a Valentine soiree on Saturday, February 13th in the evening. So that'll be a night before Valentine's Day party. So anyway, just to let you know what's coming up. Um, so we've got the hash browns that are already thawed and we squeezed all the water out using a dish towel. So now we need to add some of the other ingredients. Hello. So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add the onion. So we're just gonna pop all of that right in there. Pardon my fingers. Okay, so we're gonna add the onion and we're going to add the Uncle Steve shake. Mm -hmm. okay, so that's done. And now we're going to add the butter. Like butter. Now this butter was, it's ju I just heated it in the microwave until it was melted. You don't wanna cook the butter, you just wanna melt the butter. So we're gonna run the butter over all of that, and I want to make sure I get absolutely. I butter stuff. Yeah, I want every little drop of butter. Every bit of butter out of there. 
Okay, so let's put this aside. You know, hand stuff to me. Um, okay, well, I'll hand stuff to you, and you could stash it on the counter. Yeah. Do you mind? Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now, we've got our potatoes, our butter, our seasonings, the Uncle Steve shake, gator shake, and the red onions. And then the next thing we're going to do is just stir all of this together. So we want to make sure that we get everything as evenly distributed and well incorporated as we can. Yes, we are going to be doing some day drinking today, Jeff. As soon as we get a batch of this, in the waffle iron, we're going to mix up some cocktails. And today we're making white Russians. And I'll also tell you how to make a black Russian because it's actually even easier than a white Russian. Now, if I can keep from getting this mixture all over the place, we need, you know what? I'd like to buy a glass bowl that's like way bigger than this <laughs> or else maybe a plastic bowl that's clear and see-through because I, I like using um, transparent bowls and vessels when we do live streams so you can see what's going on in the bowl. Because since we don't have a camera overhead as well as in front of us, it's sometimes it's hard to see what's going on in the bowl. So how does that look to you? Does that look mixed up it's good enough? pretty mixed. Okay. So now we've got that going on. Now the next thing that we need to do is we want to add our grated cheese. And like I mentioned earlier, we're using pepper jack today. Thank you, sir. I'm going to hand those off to you as well. And then our next ingredient is going to be the finely chopped bacon bits. So we're just going to toss those in there. Thank you. And I want to just stir these in just a little bit. Start to get these babies mixed in. So this is super easy. And we have all of our ingredients prepared ahead of time because we find that that works really good for live streams. But I like that sort of mise en place style of cooking. I like to get all of the ingredients ready before we actually start cooking anything. Then you know you've got it all too. Yeah, <laughs> then you know you've got everything together. So, okay, there, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got that going on. Now, the last thing that we're going to add is the egg. And this is still nice and frothy, so I'm just gonna pour this right over there. And we wanna make sure and get all of the egg out of the bowl. There we go. May I hand that off to you? Thank you, sir. Okay, so now we're going to make sure we thoroughly stir the egg into the potato, onion, bacon, cheese mixture. And I see Mona has joined us in the chat. Hi, Mona. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We're just getting the hash brown mixture put together. And basically, if you missed it, just what it involves is taking all the seven ingredients and putting them in a bowl and mixing them all together. So it's very easy and very straightforward. Okay, I wanna make sure that we got the egg nicely coated over all of the ingredients. Helps them stick together. Yes, how does that look to you? It's good. Are we okay? Did I get stirred enough? I think so. Okay, so let me get a towel and wipe off my hands a little bit. We need a little bit of mess here on the tabletop. Okay, so that, as you saw, was very easy. This is our bacon cheese hash brown mixture. Okay, so it's all ready to go. And I noticed that the Cuisinart griddler is up to temperature, so we're ready to get started. Now I'm gonna set this off to the side just for a minute, and can I ask you to hand me a uh, mitt? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so now normally what we've been doing, could you, I don't want you to have to touch anything. I need the olive oil spray. I just want to show what it is. Okay. okay, so you've often heard us say when we're doing live streams that we don't use cooking spray around our digital equipment. Ordinarily, when we've been using this griddler in the kitchen, I use this, uh, or we use this olive oil aerosol spray, and that works really easily to coat. You want to coat the plates of the waffle iron before you put this mixture in so things don't stick. But today, we can't spray this around the digital equipment. I'm gonna let you have that back. So today I have just a small bowl of regular olive oil and I'm going to use a brush. I wanna set this up so we don't drip olive oil all over the place. We're going to use a pastry brush just like this. It's just a regular old, it's, it's actually, you know, they could be art paint brushes, but it's food safe. So we're just gonna use this to coat the plates on the waffle iron. And it doesn't take very much oil. Woo, Woo steamy. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this olive oil and I'm just gonna brush all, pardon me for getting in your face. Okay, so I'm just gonna brush olive oil over the surface of the waffle iron plate. That looks pretty good, what do you think? Yeah, not yeah. much. Don't need too much, just a little tiny bit. Yeah, it's nonstick, but I want to, I just like to double, yeah. you know, make sure that we have our bases covered when it comes to things like that, because getting stuck stuff out of a waffle iron is really a pain in the neck. Belt and suspenders. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just let this okay. get coated there. So that's it, that's all it takes. Very super easy to do. So we'll put that aside for now. We'll save this because we're going to do two batches. This mixture is enough to make approximately eight half cup size hash brown patties. And what we're gonna do to measure this, I'm gonna close this back down just while we're talking so it stays hot. What we're going to do next is measure out the fillings. So I wanna do a quick check in with the chat. I see uh, Chef Sheila is here from Spasmatic Chef. Hi, Sheila, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. And Ryan G is here from Ryan G's Barbecue. So great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out today. We really appreciate it. So now we're gonna be ready because the griddler is hot. Our mixture is prepared. So the next thing that we're going to do I neglected to bring a big spoon to scoop this up. Want a big one? Um, well, I've got this wooden one. I guess I could use this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do next is I have a half a cup measuring cup here, and this is a metal one. I want to use something that it's okay if it comes in contact with the waffle iron while it's hot, and this will definitely hold up. So you don't want to use a plastic measuring cup for this. And what I'm going to do is just fill this up with some of the hash brown mixture. And I like to use a spoon to do that. And then I want to press this down just a little bit so it is a slightly compacted. You don't want to just toss this stuff in loose kind of all willy-nilly because then you won't wind up with a cohesive uh, patty of hash brown material. When you go to take them out, you'll just have little pieces and it'll just make a big burnt mess. Guess how we know that. <laughs> okay. So next thing we're going to do is... Ready? Pop that baby open. And then we're going to place one half cup on, we have four different waffle compartments here on the waffle plate. So we're gonna put a half a cup of this mixture on each one. And I'm trying to work as quickly as possible and talk at the same time because what'll happen is the first one might be slightly more done than the other ones because it's had more time in the waffle iron. So we wanna to try to make sure these are as evenly cooked as possible. I need to enlist your help. Okay. I forgot to get that little digital timer that's on the stove vent. Okay, so we're going to put a third one over here. And I don't know if I don't know if you guys can hear the sizzling, but there is definitely yep. a sizzle it's going sizzling. on here. So this unit definitely heated up. And what we're going to do next is just fill the a fourth half cup for these babies. There we go. And I'm going to put this one in the fourth compartment. Okay. So ready to lower the lid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's gonna happen is because we've filled this reasonably full, it's going to, as the uh, remaining moisture in the ingredients dissipates into steam, you'll be able to press this completely flat so you get a nice contact of the top plates on the top of the hash brown material so we get as an, even as a cook as we can. So what we wanna do next, we're using our Smartro little digital timer. This is one that we did a review on a few months ago. And I'm going to set this for eight minutes. We've done some tests and we found that eight minutes gives us a nice crispy exterior and also sort of a, like a soft, almost creamy interior. It's yeah, great. really, really good. So we're gonna set this for eight minutes and it'll let us know when eight minutes have gone by. Okay, so while that's happening, I'm going to, can you just Pepper put drink. that aside yeah. for a minute? Thank you. Okay, so we've got seven minutes and 44 seconds to make cocktails <laughs> before these babies are done and have to come out. So let's get started on the cocktails. 
right now. <laughs> so what we're doing today is a classic cocktail from the 1960s that's called a White Russian. And it's made of vodka, Kahlua, and cream. I'm also gonna, when you come back, I'm gonna need that green yep. thing mm -hmm. of cream. Okay, so what we're going to do today, I have plastic over the tips of the bottles because we've had an ant problem the last couple of weeks. So I'm trying to keep the ants away from all of our goodies. Cream. Thank you very much. So let me move these aside so everyone can see what I'm doing. And our cute little Fiesta creamer. Yes, our Fiesta creamer. And so what we're gonna do first is we're going to fill these glasses. These are low ball or rock style glasses. That's traditionally what white Russians are served in. And this drink really does well if you put lots and lots of ice because we're not shaking these ingredients first. So there isn't any opportunity for things to get cold in a shaker. So that's why we're gonna fill these glasses up with as many ice cubes as they can handle. Hey, I see you in the kitchen with Karen has joined us. Hi, Karen. Great to see you. And congratulations to Karen. She just, her channel just went over 1,000 subscribers. Right so congratulations. That's always an important milestone for every YouTuber we've ever known. <laughs> and we were so excited when that happened for us. So congratulations, Karen. Good work. She's been putting out a lot of videos with some really cool recipes. So if you haven't already checked out her channel, she already knows. And some of you do too. We're huge fans of hers. So Anyway, congratulations, Karen. So we have ice cubes. We're going, this is one of the uh, drinks that uh, doesn't require a shaker. We're going to make this right in the serving glass that we're going to drink it out of. So first we're gonna need two ounces of vodka in each glass. So this little jigger has a one ounce measuring cup on one side. So I'm going to put two ounces of vodka in each glass. Hear it sizzling. Mm -hmm, I can hear it sizzling too. Okay, so the hash brown uh, mixture is cooking nicely in the Cuisinart Griddler. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to add one ounce of Kahlua. And if you're not familiar with Kahlua, this is a coffee flavored liqueur and it's got a nice amount of sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet or cloying in any way. So we're gonna do one ounce of Kahlua in each glass. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just going to take a spoon and just stir these ingredients together, just like that, supremely, supremely easy. And next it's time for the cream. Now today we have heavy cream. You can use half and half. You can even use milk if that's what you have in your refrigerator. That'll work just fine. Now you can put as much cream as you want on these drinks. You can top it off however you like. If uh, we could measure it and do a whole ounce, we could do half an ounce. It just depends on your personal preference. I actually like a lot of cream. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. We're gonna measure out one ounce of cream and then we're just going to pour the cream over the top of the drink like that. Mm. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing for the second <laughs> one. We're just gonna pour the cream right over the top of the drink. There we go. So can I give that back mm -hmm. to you? Okay. So there you have it. Traditionally, white Russians are not garnished with anything at all. They're served just like this on the rocks in a low ball or a rock style glass. So, uh, there you have it, white Russians. Now, I also promised I would say how to make a black Russian. And the difference is just leave the cream out, okay? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so if you make a black Russian, it is going to be all alcohol. So it's gonna be supremely, supremely boozy. But you know, boozy is a good thing. So I see Mr. Blueberry Toys is here. Hey, Mr. Blueberry, thanks for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. Great to see you this afternoon. We have just finished making white Russian cocktails. And some of you who are in our age range may remember these from, they were popular in the 1960s and 1970s. It was considered a very chic drink to order. So there's one for each of us. Let's give Yay. this baby a try. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everyone. everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Mmm. Mmm. 
super good. It's yummy. Yeah, it is yummy. yummy. Now, traditionally, these um, we saw we layered the heavy cream over the top of the Kahlua and the vodka. And after that, it's uh, traditional not to stir it up any further. However, if you want to stir yours up and mix it all together, you can certainly do that. I'm just sort of swirling my ice cubes around, and that's sort of resulting in the Kahlua and vodka coming up into the cream. But for serving purposes, like you want it to look yeah. layered. You can definitely mix it up after you've <laughs> poured it if you yourself prefer to have it this way. So cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. Thanks for coming out this afternoon and helping me out. Mm. Oh my gosh. It tastes really good when you mix everything together because you really get that lovely Kahlua flavor. Even if you're not a huge fan of coffee, Kahlua is actually quite delicious. So there you have it, white Russians. And like I said, to make a black Russian, you just leave out the heavy cream. And the ratios for this cocktail are also right below in the description below where you're watching this live stream, along with the ingredients for the hash brown mixture that we're using in the Cuisinart Griddler today. So this is super yummy. I, I'm really enjoying that cocktail. That is good. Okay, we've got just a little over a minute left before this will be ready. Uh, let me make sure everyone is playing nicely. Yes, so thank you all for coming to join us today. Oh my gosh, we have 23 people wow. in our stream this afternoon. That's super cool. And uh, before you came upstairs, there was actually, like last week, there was a pre-chat going on in the chat room before we were even live, which I also thought was really cool. It gives everyone a chance to you know, say hi and get acquainted and things like that. So and we really appreciate that you all come and hang out with us because it makes it super fun to do these live streams when we can get some instant feedback. If people have questions, we can answer them on the spot. So we really appreciate you guys coming to hang out because it makes for a really fun afternoon. So we've got 37 seconds left and we'll see how these beauties came out. I'm going to get this ready. It stopped sizzling. Yeah, it's not sizzling as much as it was. I'm gonna put this cocktail business aside for Let now. Yes, they're right there. Oh, right there. Um, and let's see, the next thing we're going to need, getting waffles out of a waffle iron is always a little bit of a precarious experience. I have some heat proof spatulas and I may use one or both of these to pop the hash brown waffles out of the griddler once they're done. And they're going to be done. There it is. Ready, Teddy? Time. Okay, let's go. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, cool. Yeah, Those are good. Nice. I hope everyone can see these. These look really good. This is exactly what we're looking for. So they're nice and crispy on the exterior. So I'm going to try to pop these babies out really carefully. There we go. There we go. That's not bad. There we go. Okay, one. Ooh, these look good. These came out good. Now let's, I'm going to flip You're one on the of them yet. over so you can see what the bottom looks like. The bottom does get a little bit crispier. But only a little. But only a little. Yeah, that's, good. you know, that's a thing that's inherent to a waffle iron because the whatever you're cooking in it comes in contact with the bottom plate yeah. first and has more time to actually cook. So I see a lot of complaints about waffle irons that the bottom is more cooked than the top. And that's just kind of inherent to a waffle iron. It's the way that it works. So there's another one. And let's get this baby out. These look good. These look good. Okay, so we want to very, very carefully lower this top back down. Should I get those here. little pieces of debris yeah, out of here? Okay, sometimes we've noticed when we've been making these hash browns that little tiny pieces of hash brown will get left behind in the waffle iron. And you want to, even though it's a pain in the neck, you want to get these little bits out because they're going to burn if we leave them in there unchecked. And then that's just going to make the next batch that we do not taste as good as it could. So this is kind of a huge pain in the butt. But, oh well, it seemed to work. Okay, so we're gonna close this down very, very carefully. So this can stay hot. We're gonna do a second batch because we still have enough mixture to make another batch. So I'm gonna put these aside for now. And, da-da, there you have it. Bacon cheese, hash browns made in a waffle iron. How cool is that? And so fast too. I mean, these look super delicious. Wow. So now we also have some accoutrements today and we have sour cream and we have some fresh parsley from our herb garden on the balcony that we've just chopped super, super fine. 
And we have some plates. Pardon me for reaching. So I'm assuming you want to try one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's get these going on. Do, which one would you like? Do you have a preference? Uh, what, uh, in, the, in there all. Look okay. Good. Well, they <laughs> they do all look good. So let's one for each of us. There's your fork. I'll move this out of your way. Okay. So do you want any accoutrements on yours? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Just watch out because that's yep. super super hot. Okay, so we're just gonna add blobs of sour cream. You could elevate this presentation by putting the sour cream in a dispenser and then squeezing it out like they do uh, often at Mexican restaurants. Ta -da. So I'm just gonna add a little blob of sour cream to the top of mine as well. And then a little tiny, little tiny bit of parsley. That just makes it look really chefy. Okay, so let's, we can leave those there. So let's show everyone what we've got. This is what we've got. Our very chefy bacon cheese hash browns. So I can't wait to try these. These look so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. Be careful now of that hot yeah. thing. Okay, so I'm gonna spread my sour cream around a little bit. Ooh, nice crunch. Yeah, can you guys hear that crunch? They got very, very crispy on the exterior. Is it too hot to eat? Is it gonna be okay? Mmm. 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 These are really good, people. Supremely yummy. Nice and crispy. Crispy on the outside, soft and pillowed on the inside. Nice texture, contrast. Mm. I mean, it tastes delicious. They do. I mean, it's potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, cheese and bacon. With cheese and bacon, hello. And Uncle Steve's shake. I know, Uncle mm. Steve's shake. Don't forget the Uncle Steve's shake right here. We're using gator shake. Gators for taters. That's what Philip always says. Gator shake works really well with a lot of vegetables, particularly potatoes. Mm. Now, let's just say, for example, some of you may be wondering, you guys are often doing low carb. This is definitely not low carb. Oh, heck no. No, it is so <laughs> not low carb. However, you could turn this low carb because you could substitute for the hash browns and use cauliflower rice. How do you do that? You take the cauliflower rice and you steam it in the microwave according to the package directions. Then you let it cool down. And when it's cool, you put it in a dish towel, just like we did for the hash brown potatoes. And you just wring out all the water that you can. And then you just do the same thing we did with the ingredients. You mix the cauliflower rice with all the same ingredients we did, the cheese, the bacon, the onions, the seasonings. And then you've got a low carb version of this same deal. And we actually have already tried that in the waffle iron. It works very, very well. So you can, if you want to take this in a low carb direction, just substitute cauliflower rice for the hash brown potatoes. Very easy to do. And it also tastes really, really good. Sometimes I worry when we use cauliflower rice that sometimes it can taste a little grassy. But with the Uncle Steve shake and the uh, bacon and cheese that we've got going on, that did not happen at all. And they also held together really nicely, just like these units are. So I think this is so yummy. Mmm. These are good, people. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So yummy. I see C-Mac has joined us in the chat. Hey, Craig. Great to see you. Say hi to Riley for us. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's uh, so great to see so many of our friends here today. How lovely is that? Hey, and Double ZZ Ranch just popped into the chat room. So nice of you to join us this yeah. afternoon. We really appreciate it. So what we've been making are bacon cheese, hash brown patties in the Cuisinart Griddler that we have outfitted with waffle iron plates. Those came as a separate purchase in this little box right here. And they're designed specifically for use in this unit. Now this unit comes with griddle plates that flip over to a grill and you can pop the plates in and out. That was a, an important uh, consideration for us because we love our little dash waffle iron, but the problem is you can't get the plates out of it. So it's very hard to clean. It only makes one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, it makes one lovely little You're waffle. You're all by yourself, that's great. Yeah, but we've been making a, a large batches of things and because it takes eight minutes to make these. If we make 10, then we're standing at the kitchen counter with the single waffle hour uh -huh. for over an hour just to get one batch, which is a little bit much. So uh, that's why we decided to invest in a larger waffle iron that can also make a lot of other things. And feel free to have anything that you want. Now, we also made a white Russian cocktail because, you know, day drinking on Tuesdays oh, wow. is one of our favorite parts of doing this live stream. So cheers to that. 
Mm. Oh my gosh. So supremely yummy. Okay. So one other thing that some people may know is that we're collectors of Fiesta that would also known as Fiesta Wear China. And today, January 12th was the new announcement for the 2021 color for Fiesta. So what I want to show you is The color. This is it. This is the new color for Fiesta for 2021. It's called Twilight, and it's a deep yet bright shade of blue. We actually think the color is quite gorgeous. However, it's very, very similar to their color called Cobalt. This is more indigo. Yeah, I think so, too. It's leaning towards purple just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. We're going to have to see what it looks like in person before yeah. we make a final decision because the color from last year was called Butterscotch, and it looked very similar to other yellow-orange shades that they've had in the past. But when we finally got a piece of it and we set it next to the other colors, it actually isn't the same at all. And so we'll have to do the same thing with this color. We'll buy one piece of it as soon as it's available because they did announce the color today, but you can't actually buy them until June. So we still have to wait several months before you can actually get your hands on these beauties. So we are definitely going to be giving those a try. Oh, uh, Rob wants to know, where does the June oven live when it's not on camera? It actually lives over in the kitchen. We're in our dining room right now. And to my right, that would be your left, is our kitchen. And on the kitchen counter right next to the refrigerator is where the June usually sits. It's light enough weight that we can pick it up and bring it yeah. over here to use it in the dining room. And she that's one of the things we like about it too is that it can be moved if need be. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see, I wanna make sure I said hi to everyone. I think I did. So this is what we've got going on today. Now we've got one more batch to cook. Yeah. So let me push this stuff off to the side for just a moment and we'll get another batch started. We have uh, this recipe is enough to make approximately eight of these and we used half a cup of the mixture to make these. Thank you very much. So now we're going to be ready to do this again. Now we'll have to check and see. We may or may not need to put more olive oil ready? on the waffle iron. We'll check it out. Let's have a look. Oh, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty that's pretty stuff. greased yeah. to me. Now I see a couple of burnt bits in here. I want to try to get these out so we don't wind up with anything burnt. Okay, so I think we've got enough oil left from the first time around, so we don't really need to do that again. Just be really super careful, boo. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we have uh, more mixture left, and I'm just going to measure this out. I'm using a half a cup. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. So I'm going to just use a large spoon to fill up the measuring cup. And then I like to press the mixture down just a little bit so it's slightly compacted. <clears throat> you don't want to compact it too much that it won't come out of the measuring cup. But you also, if you don't compact it at all and they just fall in here really loose, you don't get a nice... You'll have even more of these little bits. Yeah, you'll have <laughs> more little bits to clean up and it won't form a nice patty like this. So let's see if we can get this going on here. There we go. Now this should be enough to do another four. We'll see how that works out. Okay, so I'm just gonna measure out in half a cup increments the remainder of this mixture and then transfer it over to the griddler. See, now that one fell apart a little bit, so we may wind up with some loose bits oh. around that one, but that's okay. Okay, so let's see. Now we want to get this all filled up. Okay, so number three is ready. <laughs> C-Mac says he loves carbs, but his booty doesn't. <laughs> it's not our booty that has the problem. It's my tummy that has the problem when I eat too many carbs. I wind up looking like I'm six months pregnant. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's see, I think I need to get rid of that. And we've got enough in here to make one more. So I'm just going to try to fill this up without making a huge mess. 
Okay. Well, I got some over here on the table. But oh well. <laughs> so I dripped a little. A little bit bigger in there, yeah. Okay, that should do it. May I hand that off to you? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now I want to get this one in here before the other ones get too far along. Okay. And we're ready to close the lid. Going down. Get this cleaned up. Okay, so we're just going to gently press the lid down to flatten out the patties so they'll cook as evenly as possible. And the next thing that we want to do, we're going to set our Smartro timer once again for eight minutes. And in eight minutes, voila, we'll have more food to eat. Woo, woo, woo. Now, just so you know, if you make these ahead of time, you can let them get cold and then reheat them later. You've been reheating them in the oven. Tell <laughs> us about how you did that. Uh, 350 degrees for like five minutes. Did you, did you, did you grease your pan that you set them on or no, anything no, like no, that? No, so you no. just pop them on a baking sheet. Eat. Pop them in at 350, five minutes later, they're warmed up. And if you want, you can flip them and do them a little longer, but they really don't need it. Because they're already, they're pretty crispy and they just need to be warm. Okay, so the final batch is underway. Cheers. We've been drinking white Russian cocktails today and the ingredients for this are right down in the description below where you're watching this video. And I see John Overstreet is here. Hi, John. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. How cool is that? Awesome. Okay, let me make sure I said hi to everyone else. Oh, yes. John is commenting about how the reheat setting for the June actually works really well for things like this. So we'll have to give that a try. Um, we actually know John from going to events at the June oh, headquarters yeah, cool. here in San Francisco. So it's great to see you, John. We hope everything is going well with you. And that your new year is off to a great start. Okay, so we've got our final batch of these lovely <laughs> little beauties. Mm, I already had two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, and I still have some of mine left over here, so I'm probably going to wind up polishing this off. So that's what we've been doing this afternoon. We've been using, let me show you for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the show. We recently bought this. This is called the Cuisinart Griddler. And this has had a lot of different incarnations over the last few years. This is the most recent one available. And if you want to check out the details on this, you can click. There's a link right below in the description below where you're watching this live stream. And there's a link that will take you to the Amazon page for this unit. So if you want to buy one for yourself, you definitely can. They're in the $80 price range. And they can't. this unit comes with um, – I should show you these. It comes with – these grill plates that are a grill on one side and then a flat griddle on the other side. So that these are the two plates that the unit actually comes with. And the waffle iron plates are an accessory purchase. Let me show you the box that those came in. So the waffle iron plates are a separate purchase. We also have a link for the waffle iron plates down below. And these, we've been using these for the last few days, testing this unit out, and these work really, really, really well. We they, made regular waffles the other day, and they, they came out nice. They crispy, were super, fluffy. super good. And for those of you who've been asking about, when are you going to have an Amazon store? Well, we do, and we have a few things added to it. So the griddler and the waffle plates, uh, we have our gold cocktail shakers and those cute little gem uh, cocktail picks that people are often asking us about. And we'll be adding more items to our Amazon store as time unfolds. Looks like you're going to need another drink. He's thirsty. Okay. Do you want me to start out with fresh ice cubes? I just dump some more on top. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I'm not proud. <laughs> so let me show you, how, for those of you who missed out how we did this cocktail, we've got, I've got four minutes to make another drink. Okay. So what we're going to do... Just pop in some fresh ice cubes. And this drink is so easy because you don't need to shake it in a shaker. And it's very, very easy to put together. We've got Kahlua. We've got vodka. Cream. Cream. Oh, I forgot to put out our little spill-proof tray. Let's right. do that. There we go. Okay. So now this drink is super, super easy because you make it right in the serving glass. So you want to put the ice cubes in first, and then we're going to put two ounces of vodka. So one, 
to some of the recipes that I read only used like a splash of cream. We like a lot of cream, so we put a whole ounce, but you know, we're gonna put a whole ounce of Kahlua. Here's a confession. I've never had Kahlua before. You've never had Kahlua before? No. And you don't like coffee. No. This is a coffee flavor. That's why I haven't had it. So, yeah. I was like, it's coffee? I was like, coffee? Oh, no. Oh, actually, it's yummy. It tastes really yummy, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so once we've poured uh, the vodka and the Kahlua over the rocks, we just want to give this a little stir to blend those two ingredients together. And then, oh, wait, we're no, going to measure. Oh, yeah, right. Measure. We're going to measure. So I'm going to measure out another ounce of heavy cream. I'll let you have that because it's almost gone. And then we're just going to pour this over the top like that. And there's no need to stir this in. It's supposed to be served so it looks layered. Like clouds. Like clouds, you know, on a dark sky or yeah. something like that. Anyway, so that's how you make a white over Russian. Over dark Russian mountains. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to use <laughs> Russian vodka. I'm not using Russian vodka. But you, that's what makes it a Russian is the vodka. So if you want to make a black Russian instead of a white Russian, just omit the cream. Okay, that's all there is to it. So it's going to be super boozy because it's just Kahlua and vodka, but it's mm. going to taste really good. Mm. So let me make sure we've said hi to everyone. Uh, oh, and thanks all of you for the lovely comments on last week's video. We did a little bit of a departure for our pre-recorded videos. And instead of cooking something or mixing a cocktail or doing a DIY project, I explained a technique about video editing that we often use called pan and zoom. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about editing and how to up your game when it comes to putting your videos together for YouTube, please consider checking out our pre-recorded episode from last Friday where we show you exactly how to use the pan and zoom feature and explain what that is and why it might be of interest to you. So now we've got our cocktails ready. We've got another minute and, and a half. half on the griddler. And then our last batch of the bacon cheese hash browns will be done. I can't wait because I want to eat some more of them. They are so good. So uh, let's see, I think I said hi to everyone. We're doing really good here. So. This is just still cooking. We've got one minute left to go. And I wanna have another bite of this. One of the things we talked about how to reheat these and John Overstreet mentioned that the June reheat uh, feature works really well for this. And actually we've done that. You, These are actually, they're also okay cold. Last night there was one left on the counter and we ate it after it had been sitting out for a while and it was still good. The other thing is you don't have to eat these just as a hash brown dish. You could use this as we talked about yesterday a base for eggs benedict instead of an english muffin Ooh. that'd be super good you could use this with gravy instead of biscuits and gravy you can have hash browns and gravy i think that would be super super yummy and if you really want to like get super mash up chefy i think these would make great like sandwich bread or hamburger buns you could yeah. put protein like a hamburger or a slider burger and cheese and onions yeah and, and then smash the whole thing together i think that would be super delicious so <clears throat> Oh, everyone's talking about the balls collaboration, <laughs> the meatball collaboration. For those of you who aren't already familiar with what that is, we're, we've organized hashtag the great meatball cook-off 2021. And uh, that video is available on our channel as well if you'd like to learn the details about that. So there's still time to participate because it's happening on Friday, January 29th. So be sure and check out that video and we'd love to have you participating in the collaboration. Almost uh, two dozen channels have indicated That's so cool. far that they're making videos for the meatball collab. Meatball! And of course it's super fun to uh, you know talk about balls when we're talking about food. Right? There's no way not to have fun with that. So uh, Sunset wants to know if the crispy, crispy bits that come apart can be used as croutons and I give that oh, a yes. thumbs up. Yeah. Yes, yes, Sunset, no definitely. <laughs> no, that we're gonna eat them no matter what. So, okay, let me see if I can get these other babies out of here. This one fell apart a little bit, Oh, but they're still gonna taste good. It's still stuck together pretty well. Actually, it stuck together pretty oh. well. Okay, no. I think using two spatulas actually, last night when I was practicing this, I only used one. It's actually easier to get them out when you use two. So these are heat proof spatulas. You don't want to use any plastic utensils with this because this thing is heated to 425 degrees and it is very hot and sizzly. 
So let me see if I can get this last baby out. Let's turn this over so you can see. The bottom side gets a little crispier than the top because it sat uh, on the plate for longer. Be careful. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I don't want you to get hurt on the waffle iron. So now the one thing that you want to do once you're through with the waffle iron is, ouch. Careful. Yeah. This, this part, this metal part of the handle gets hot. This part does not. So you have to be really careful. So what we want to do now is turn this off. Turn off. Cool and then down? it can start cooling down. So let me show you these. This is the latest batch. And you can see that the top side isn't quite as crispy as the bottom side. And that's because when we put the potatoes in, they sat against the bottom surface for longer than the top. That's just the nature of a waffle iron. So if you want them to look super crispy, you can put the bottom side up when you serve them to your guests. So there you have it. Bacon cheese, mm. hash browns in the waffle iron. Now, if you don't have a griddler, that's okay. You can use any waffle iron that you've got available. Prior to getting the griddle, griddler, we used to use this mini dash waffle iron to make this same dish. Uh, the reason that we decided to upgrade was twofold. One is that this can only make one at a time. And also because these plates do not come out of this unit. So, and because you can't get this wet, it's kind of a pain in the neck to clean. So that's why we decided, you know, we didn't want to stand at the counter for an hour and a half making a whole batch of these when you saw we can do it much faster because we can do yeah, four at a time four instead and of one. Minutes. And the plates, once they're cooled down, pop right out and you can wash them by hand. Now the directions say you can put them in the dishwasher. I'm not planning on doing that, but yeah, but they, they say that you can. So we'll, we'll, we're not gonna test that, <laughs> but um, that's the last one that yeah. was left, so. Huh. Okay, so you can use these. We're just serving them as is with a little sour cream and a little finely chopped fresh parsley from the herb garden on our balcony. Imagine gravy. Sausage gravy. Sausage gravy over these Hello. would be so <laughs> delicious. And I think these would be an excellent vehicle for an eggs benedict. I mean, oh, yeah. making um, the sauce is kind of a pain in the neck for Ace ben <laughs> eggs benedict. But hollandaise, is, hollandaise is a little temperamental. But uh, Jeff says he needs to upgrade his waffle iron. Well, Jeff, we would recommend this. So go check it out. There's a link right below where you're watching this live stream from exactly where we bought this on Amazon. And you can get one too. And if you want the waffle iron plates, that's an accessory purchase. There's a link down below. Also exactly from where we bought the waffle iron plates. So you can duplicate the same piece of equipment in your kitchen and pull off the same results we have today. And we've just begun to experiment with this. We've used the waffle iron plates several times already but we still haven't used the grill or the griddle plates. So we're going to be trying that next to see what else we can come up with. I'm not sure how this does with grilled cheese, but it probably does great. We're really enamored of using the June oven for our grilled cheese sandwiches because it's so easy. You just put the grilled cheese sandwich in the June oven and bada bing, six or eight minutes later, your yeah, sandwich yeah. is ready. Uh, and Without you don't it. have to flip it over. So it's really low maintenance to be able to make sandwiches in the June oven. That's one of our favorite things to do is make grilled cheese in the June because you just have to put the sandwich in and bada bing, when it comes out, it's already done already because it heats the top and the bottom. Using uh, the roast feature, it heats both the top and the bottom at the same time. So there you have it. Bacon cheese, hash brown waffles in the Cuisinart Griddler. Woo woo, how cool is that? Okay, and we also showed you how to make a white Russian the ingredients for both the bacon cheese, hash browns, and the white Russian are right below where you're watching this live stream in the written description. So you can copy and paste those into your digital recipe book. And we hope you give this recipe a try. These are, as you can see, we're scarfing on these. Mm. They're so delicious and super yummy. And then you can also reheat them very easily. Like John pointed out, you can do it in the June oven using the reheat feature. If you don't have a June oven, you can do it in a regular oven. I actually put one of these and I microwaved it at 50% and that doesn't add any extra crispness to it, but it did get it warmed up. So you can do it that way as well. So these are very friendly towards being reheated after they've been made. If you don't eat them all right away. And they also still taste pretty good at room temperature. Mm. You know, sometimes cold potatoes aren't that great, but actually when these cooled down, they still tasted really, really delicious. They stayed crispy on the outside. I'd like to, mm. I'd like to use these. I, I'm thinking like, you know, this is a really good vehicle for a lot of different things. We could put 
marinara sauce and some pepperoni and make bacon cheese hash brown pizzas. I think this would be super cute. You know, we want to, we like mashing up lots of different foods together. And to answer sunset questions, these little crunchy bits that fall off from time to time around the ed edges. Yes, put these in your salad and make excellent croutons. That would be so would delicious. Sprinkle some in the griddler and then. Yeah. Or you could just take this and pull it apart if mm. you wanted to. That would also work. So. It's not super crispy. Well, thank you so much, Julie. Uh, we agree. I think these look amazing and they taste really good as well. As you can see, we've been, had three. We've been scarfing <laughs> on them. We get to have lunch and cocktails They're at delicious. the same time. And so is it. Oh, let's yeah. see. Simple Recipes wants to know, what is the title of the video with the editing topic? It's called How to Use Pan and Zoom for Cooking Videos. And we just published it last Friday, which Friday was the 8th. So it'll be, um, besides this live stream, it'll be the next most recent video. So if you go to our main page, once this live stream is over, it's going to be right in the recent uploads category at the top page of our YouTube channel. And in that video, we explain the concept of what pans and what zooms are when it comes to using uh, still pictures that you want to make move around the screen. And if you like seeing these editing technique videos and you'd like to see more of them, be sure and let us know in the comments for that video. We've actually already had a couple of requests from other YouTubers if we can demonstrate how do we do other different techniques, including uh, Flour e Eggs and Yeast asked if we could show how to make things in the background or in your videos disappear. You know how sometimes you oh, yeah. see someone, they snap their fingers and then something is suddenly gone from the set or you snap your fingers and something suddenly appears. That's actually a reasonably easy technique to pull off. And that's going to be coming up in the not too distant future. We'll show you how to do that as well. It's just a little bit of TV magic, but it's actually pretty easy to pull off. So we'll tell you all about that soon. Uh, Oh, yes. And Rob for Mr. Homeowner has been, he says he's been testing it uh, to do the pan and zooms on the vid. So we hope cool. that helps you out, Rob. His videos are already really nice to watch. And it's, uh, I, I really like it when he cooks outside because he has a really beautiful backyard and a gorgeous swimming pool. And it's really fun to see the backyard in the background while he's cooking. So someday we'll have a swimming pool. Yeah, someday we'll have a swimming pool. I'm trying to talk this guy into moving to Palm Springs. And you can't live in Palm Springs and not have a pool. So we'll see. We may we may wind up in Palm Springs. We may wind up somewhere else. But you know, we're not quite ready for retirement yet. So that's still a few years off. But we are definitely planning to have a swimming pool in our next house. So, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. It was so great to have you all hanging out with us. We had a lovely chat going on in the chat room, which was super cool. And we made these lovely bacon cheese mm. hash browns in the Cuisinart Griddler using the custom waffle iron plates that we bought as an accessory. And we also showed you how to make a white Russian cocktail. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers everyone. Mm. Mm. These are super yummy. So we hope you enjoyed the show today. We really appreciate you all being with us today. And thank you everyone for playing so nicely in the chat room that we really appreciate that. I think the chat is a really fun element of the live stream. So if you haven't tried doing like a, a live party. stream yet, be sure and give it a try. Oh, I see. I missed saying hi to Arcade Arcade. Ooh. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And just so you know, we'll have a new pre-recorded episode coming up this Friday. And we'll tell you about that when it comes out on Friday. <laughs> We're actually going to be uh, giving you an overview of some really easy to make pink and red cocktails that you can uh, put together for Valentine's Day. So that's coming up this Friday in a pre-recorded episode. And then next week, we'll be back on Tuesday at noon, just like we always are right here. I think we'll probably be in the dining room again next week. I'm not sure what we're making yet because we have a big long list, as long as my arm, of all the different things to do for live streams. And we're also going to be experimenting more with the Cuisinart Griddler to see what other kinds of fun stuff we can make with this beautiful unit. So thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us this afternoon. It was so fun to get to be here with all of you. And thank you so much for helping me out. I oh. really appreciate it. I love you. I love you too. Okay, peeps, we really appreciate you being with us. We're going to sign off for now. And uh, yes, Michelle, we will be doing more videos on helpful hints for editing. And Michelle, if you have a specific question or a technique that you'd like to learn how to do, let us know what that is. And if we already know how to do it, We'll show yeah. you exactly how. And, and if, if we, we don't, don't, we'll 
work it out with you. Yeah, we'll learn how to do it and we'll all know how to do it together. Yeah. So great to have you all here today. We really appreciate it. Everyone have a fabulous rest of your day. Ciao. And peace, Cheers. love, and good food, people. We'll see you all again live next Tuesday at noon. Thanks for being with us. We love you. Bye.